Hi, I'm Evie Steenhook with Riverside Jet Center, and we are Share Aviation. Hey guys, Matt here with Premier Aviation HD, and we're going to do a little episode today over how to pre-flight a Cessna 152, uh, November 69 or 212 as you see here. Um, this is in response to Caden Games. Uh, he requested us to do an episode of how to pre-flight and start a Cessna 152, and that's what we're going to give you guys today, so I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, here we are. We're inside the uh, the cockpit of the Cessna 152. Um, I always ad advise people and encourage people to use a checklist. Um, I always have been taught that going by checklist you're less likely to miss a, uh, a step in the process. Um, and, and sometimes when you reserve or, or put things to memory you're you're liable to miss stuff. So I always go by a checklist and I will until the day that I stop flying. But uh, first off here on the checklist is control lock. We're going to remove the control lock just like this. Always just set this behind the seat. Okay, the next thing we're going to check the papers. I've already done this and it's uh, just remember arrow, the airworthiness, the aircraft registration, the um, operation manual and then weight and balance as well and then we're gonna check the ignition ignition switches off I've got the keys up here on the dash so I know that it will not get started the master switch we're gonna go to on with the master okay and while we're doing this we're gonna go look at down here at our fuel gauges and check the fuel quantity never trust the gauges always check uh, visually um, and check your tank so right now this is showing full but I'm not gonna trust that until I look at it Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is lower the flaps. So camera guy, watch the flaps there. There's 10. We're just going to make sure that they're all going down. All right, so now we've got the flaps lowered, guys. And then uh, we're going to make sure the fuel valve is on and master switch off. Okay, I know some people are going to say, well, why do you lower the flaps for this? And I've heard from two different people. You have your people that say that it's not necessary to lower the flaps because you can inspect the, the flaps without lowering them. And it just um, it creates uh, a, a problem sometimes with the, uh, with the battery and the flap motor. People say you don't have to do it. But the way I was taught was to lower the flaps. That way you could check out the, uh, the flap rollers and the hinges and everything. So um, I'm going to continue to lower the flaps to inspect them. I can understand if it was my airplane and I may be concerned about the, the motor life on the flaps and but you know as long as you've got them down like this I think you have better access you can see what's going on with the flaps so um, the next thing we'll do is we're going to inspect the outside okay so now we're back here to the tail section of the aircraft first thing on our list is uh, rudder gust lock this aircraft doesn't have a rudder gust lock so we don't have to remove that the next thing is we would uh, untie the tail here if we were actually going flying so the next thing is to un, un untie the tail and then you're going to check the control surfaces of the aircraft. You're looking to see if there's any kind of, if, if it binds up on you at all. Um, you're looking at all the, uh, the guts of the tail in here. You're checking the, to make sure that all the screws and, and nuts are on and it's uh, not missing anything. So you'll kind of look on both sides look underneath here where the, the uh, trim connects to the, the elevator here. Everything looks good. It's not loose. No missing parts. Everybody knows missing parts on an airplane is bad. And you're just checking the rudder to make sure it's not binding up in any way. So the next thing we do is we'll move around here to the uh, to the right wing, and we're going to check the ailerons first. So I'll move this one up, make sure that one goes down. Move this one down, make sure that one goes up. And then I'm going to go inside here and check out the uh, the pins and everything. Make sure that that uh, everything is secure. Make sure there's no bent rod there with the ailerons attached and then we'll check the flaps here. And this way you know if the flaps are down you can actually visualize the flap rollers and the uh, flap rods here. It looks tight, it looks good. So the flaps seem to be working just fine. Make sure it's not loose or anything. So and this, this whole time you're just inspecting the wing, making sure there's no dents in the wing. And uh, so we'll do kind of a walk around here. Just continue to check everything. All right, make sure that uh, nothing is hit. The wing tips, the lights appear to be in place, not loose or anything. And then from here, we're just taking a look down the leading edge, make sure there's no dents, make sure nothing's run into it. Just kind of inspecting it. And of course, we would untie the wing if we were going flying today. So the next thing on our list is let me grab the fuel strainer and the uh, stick out of here, and we're going to check our fuel. So, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strain the fuel. So you take a, just your common fuel strainer that you can pick up at any FBO and uh, strain the fuel here. There's no set amount on how much to drain. I usually drain about three quarters of a, uh, a fuel strainer and I'm checking it. And it should be light blue in color um, for Avgas. I don't see any sediments or water or anything floating in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to take my fuel dipstick with me. Step up here. And then I'm going to take the fuel dipstick. And this is for a Cessna 152. Pull it out. 10 gallons. So put that back on. Make sure it's secure. Alrighty. The next thing you do is get your checklist. Alright. The fuel quantity is good. So the next thing we'll check is the other side and then we'll move on to the engine. No sediment, light blue in color, no water. So we'll do the same as we did on the other side. All right, on the Cessna 150, you'll have a sump on the belly. On the 152, you do not. So we can put those away. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the oil. So we'll come around here in front of the aircraft. Okay, and we got a fuel strainer here. I always call this, this is where the airplane pees. Pull out, and it'll tell you for how long here. I believe it's like four or five seconds. So, one, two, three, four, five. So we're getting fuel. All right, now let's check the, uh, the oil here. Pull out. I like to wipe it off first. out and we are just under six quarts so uh, it looks to be about five and a half quarts so I may add half a quart if I was actually going flying today and if you look it says oil six quarts there on the, uh, the cap there and it has a six on it so I really don't like to, to operate over six because it'll spit it out but something else that, that a lot of pilots I've flown a lot of rental aircraft that people think that they just have to bear down and tighten that as tight as, as possible you don't have to do that. The way I usually do it is I go till it gets to where there's um, pressure on it, and then I'll give it a half a turn more, and that's it. I mean, that's all you gotta do. It's not coming off. And then while I've got this open, I just kinda inspect, make sure that no bird nests are inside it. Uh, with spring coming on, birds like to, to build nests and stuff like this, and um, that's an easy way of, of getting a, a engine fire. So I watched a guy at Sulphur Springs one day come out and clean out like a bunch of birds from the the uh, cowling here hopped in it and left and I was like man I I don't think I would want to, without removing the cowling you know where I could really make sure that I got all the, the nesting out of there you know just crank it up and go so all right now we've checked the oil all right we've seen how much we have we're just under under six so now we're going to check check the prop and what you're checking for here is any nicks in the prop you're checking make sure it's not warped in any way it's not bent then you're going to check your spinner, make sure all your spinner bolts and nuts are there. It feels tight. Okay. Check the landing light. Landing light is not burnt out. All right. Carb air filter. It's right underneath there. It's a little bit dirty, but it's okay. Nose wheel tire. On this aircraft here, we actually have a, um, a leak on the nose strut. So we're not going flying today, so it's, it's not a big concern. But... Um, you want to see about four to five fingers of the nose strut, which we have none. It's bottomed out here, but you would like four or five fingers here. Okay, so the main tire, the tires look good. They're aired up pretty nice. Uh, we've already removed the pedo tube cover over here. So, and then the fuel tank vent is open, free of debris. And you got your stall warning horn here. It's good. And then... Uh, of course, if we were flying, like I say, we would have uh, removed the wing tie down, so that's good. So now that uh, that moves us to starting the engine, so you guys follow me inside the cockpit. Okay guys, we're here in the cockpit now. Uh, we've completed the uh, exterior 
pre-flight of this Cessna 152, November 6, 9, and 212. And now we're going to move on to the uh, before starting engine checklist. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so again, we're using this checklist. So the pre-flight inspection is complete. We make sure we had all of our paperwork and documents. Passenger brief, always uh, have a thorough passenger brief, you know, explain to your passengers what's going on, where the exits to the aircraft are, what they can expect for the flight. Um, Hobbs time, this is where you record the Hobbs time, which is off of the Hobbs meter here. And then uh, circuit breakers. The circuit breakers on the 152 are right here, and you're just checking to make sure that all the circuit breakers are, are in. Seat track and back is locked. You want to make sure that the seat's not going to go backwards on you when you take off. So you're going to make sure that the seat is locked. It's good. Fuel valve is on. You just have an on and off position in this aircraft, not a uh, left, right, main uh, tank or anything like that. So it's just on or off, and down is on. So um, fuel valve is on. Avionics and electrical equipment are off. You want to make sure master's off. Radio master is off. Okay. Brakes, I'm testing my brakes. I've got good pressure on my brakes. So now we're, we'll move on to starting the engine. So, okay, here we go. Carb heat, in is off. Mixture, you go full rich. So you push in, all the way in, and give it a twist, make sure it locks. That is your uh, mixture. Throttle, you open an eighth of an inch. So just kind of measure with your finger, push it in, here's your throttle. Okay, so your primer is over here on your far left. And for primer, it says as required. I usually do about three to four in this aircraft. So there's one, push all the way in. There's two, you can feel it filling the bulb with fuel. There's three, and we'll give it one more for good measures. And there's four. So then in and locked, so you're looking for that little groove. And there's in, and then half a turn, that locks it in place. So beacon should stay on, beacon is on. Master switch is coming on. So our master switch is on. Our beacon on our tail should be um, going off. That lets people that are around the airplane know that, hey, this aircraft's about to start. All right, so now we go on to start and then oil pressure. As Soon as we start this aircraft, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the oil pressure, make sure that the oil pressure comes up as soon as it starts. The keys are still on the dash, so I'll take the keys off here just like this right here, and then we're to the point where we start the engine. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna yell clear prop, clear prop, and we're gonna look around, make sure that nobody is walking up to the aircraft where we're about to start the engine. So a lot of people just look at this area right here, but they could be walking up from behind it. So we're gonna do a complete 360 degree angle check to make sure nobody's walking up. I don't see anybody. Hand on the throttle, and we're ready to start. And I'm not gonna wait on putting my headset on, so in case somebody yells, I can hear them over the engine starting. So here we go. And we're going to do one final check. Nobody's walking up. Okay, guys, and with that video, uh, we just showed you how to do the... Uh, pre-flight inspection of a, one, a Cessna 152 with the exterior and then the, uh, the interior. So uh, hope you guys enjoy and like, comment, subscribe to uh, Premier Aviation HD. Also check out shareaviation.com. Um, all of us guys are really excited with uh, everything that's going on with the, uh, the pilot network and uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Until then, blue skies, see you in the cockpit. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share Aviation, a network for pilots by pilots.